What's up, Star Atlas gamers? It's your favorite Pirate Pock here with another juicy edition of The Leak End. Today, we're diving deep into the metaverse of Star Atlas where players can explore the depths of space and build their own empires. In this episode, we're covering everything from the supply chain and freighting industries to the future of dogfighting and the latest updates on UE5 Showroom and Sage version 0. Plus, We'll take a look at the exciting new book of recipes, which could be a major game changer in the world of Star Atlas. First up, let's talk about the supply chain. In Star Atlas, the galactic supply chain is a crucial aspect of gameplay that creates the need for industry and provides players with the opportunities for more Atlas and advancement. But beware, it also creates the opportunity for risky adventure and high stakes conflict. The supply chain industry has different levels of danger throughout each risk zone. Each comes with different consequences when a player gets attacked and or destroyed by other players or NPCs. In the safe zone, you'll be fine even if you get attacked and destroyed, but in the medium zone you'll lose all the cargo you were hauling, but you'll get to keep your ship. And in the high risk zone, you risk losing not only your cargo, but also your ship permanently. Do you dare risk the danger? You can always hire players who specialize in transport to move your resources. To maximize your gains, you might need to have your resources transported to other star systems for trade where you'll receive a better price due to the scarcity in a particular region. This creates opportunities for those who are skilled and daring enough to venture into the depths of the unknown, or those who use professional transporters. Plus, it creates competition among the factions within the marketplace. After all, war and conflict has more than one theater. And when crafting and mining are introduced, we'll see that the freighting industry is a world in and of itself, requiring different ships and setups to move different types of resources, and that it is a prized profession requiring skill and specialized equipment. The freighting industry will be essential for DAX and factions to operate and function, making it a vital part of the game's economy. The game is on when you leave your claim stake or station with a ship full of valuable cargo, and none of your travels will be the same or uneventful. At least if this pirate has anything to say about it. Since we'll have to have physical storage in the metaverse for all of our assets, resources included, I definitely do not have enough room for all my R4s, so I'm going to solve that problem. I'll never be able to afford the storage slots to hold all of it, and so Atlas Grace can have half of my supply. Whether Archetype uses them to support his current fleet, or sell them cheaply for Atlas to, to help fund his cause, that's up to him. I just know that this pirate wants to help make a difference through the metaverse. But that's not all for the updates. In the Punab Whisper, typically a lore focused section of the Atlas Star, we learn about the Book of Recipes, written by the Ooster Chef and Hunter VS Bod. This book contains a hundred entries of exotic dishes compiled from VS travels across Gallia. The publication of the book was an instantaneous success, and it started a food hunter career in the galaxy drawing young and talented chefs to explore other civilizations and to try to reproduce the exotic recipes created by Viest. The Book of Recipes could have a significant impact on gameplay in Star Atlas. Players could use it to create a unique food item that could provide various bonuses such as increase your health regeneration, improve your ship's performance, or increase mining efficiency. These food items could be sold on the planetary or star system marketplaces and sold in other star systems where they can fetch a higher price. The Book of Recipes could also be used to attract NPCs to your settlement or station. NPCs could visit your establishment just to try your exotic dishes. And who knows, you might even be able to negotiate with NPC factions over a delicious meal. In addition to claim stakes, the team has been working on improving the gameplay experience on a few different levels. They have updated and improved various projects including the UE5 showroom, Sage version 0, which the team has been internally testing since March and working on the DAO in order to be able to implement the PIPs, or player-initiated proposals. They've also been working on incorporating high-fidelity designs for resource extraction and crafting, which I'm hoping means that it's close to implementation. While we don't have any new footage of Sage gameplay or insight into the design gameplay for resource extraction and crafting, we did get a good look at the immediate future of dogfighting within the showroom. In this video, you can see that a Pierce X4 is trying to take on a C11. Probably a big mistake on the X4's part, but I really wish we got to see more than just the pilot moving for a little bit and then playing dead until he actually is dead. I can't wait to see what kind of damage we can actually do to a Commander class ship with the various ship sizes. And while we got a good look at the outside of a C11, 
we also got a good look at the inside of one in development. I'm sure this is an unfinished version that appears to be mainly to test doorway functionality, but I expect to see a whole lot more entryways and rooms in this large ship in the future. The exciting thing about this is that we might be getting closer to gameplay that is outside of the initial showroom really soon. Now looking at gameplay inside of the showroom, this week the entire Star Atlas team will be playing as Poonabs during ground racing. We got a still frame shot of one of these small characters from the developers this week. These characters were actually thought to be removed from the player gameplay because of their size, but the team had second thoughts and decided that while there might be some technical issues with playing as a small rodent, there would be some positive trade-offs. We also got to look at some concept art from the Agricola Thurpid from the Star Atlas Twitter page. This gives us a good idea of the size of the ship. This is simply the engine room, or the energy core. This ship is a large class fighter with the ability to hold six crew members. I can't wait to see this thing in the showroom, although there is only one parking space big enough for it at the moment. Someone else will have to post a video of it as well because I'm working towards buying an O-Pod for myself, and I think that a medium sized ship might be the biggest I'll ever own. Not to mention, this ship is legendarily rare with only 729 of them made. That might sound like a lot, but for a game with 100,000 players in pre-alpha, that is just a drop in the bucket. The scary thing is that all 729 of these ships were bought, which brings a lot of firepower into Gallia. Well guys, that's what we have for now, and from what I understand, we have big things on the horizon. I know I'm going to have a busy week ahead of me, and as Wagner always says, the Star Atlas team is full steam ahead. We're still waiting on news for the Town Hall that is supposed to be at the end of this month, and I'm really hoping for that announcement this week. As always, stay safe in the galactic seas, and I will catch you out there. Pock out.